You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities, and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and what is going on, guys? Welcome to another incredible episode of Vigilantes Radio Live, right here on iHeart's Radio, and I am your host, Dini. We have a very special guest for you guys this morning, so you definitely want to stick around for that. And as a matter of fact, text your buddies, family members, or even share it on social media right now, and let them know that we are about to dive deep into another interview. Before I bring my guest on, I do want to say, you know, imagine just for a moment that you are living life exactly the way you want it to be. You've broken free of your most troublesome limitations and you're fulfilling your most treasured dreams. You greet each day with confidence and with unshakable faith. You take the setbacks and strive because you know you'll find a way to work steadily through them. When faced with a decision, you choose not what will make you look good or what is easiest, but rather what is right and what is best. When working with others, you act with respect, honesty, and integrity because you know for a fact that anything less only pulls down everyone concerned. Imagine that life is the best it can possibly be. See the reality of such a life. What thoughts would you think? How would you act? What things would you say? How would you feel? Now, stop imagining and know for certain that all of those thoughts, actions, words, and feelings are available to you this very moment. You just imagine them in full detail. So go ahead and take the next step and make them real. Starting now, act the way you act if life was the best it could possibly be. Think the way you would think. Feel the way you feel. Give give life to your dreams and you have already begun to make them real. Take that from me, Coach Denny. That is my word, and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. All right, all right. Again, welcome to the show. You're listening to VRL. That's Vigilantes Radio Live right here on iHeart Radio. And I am your host, Dini. Our interviews are designed to go beyond the music, news, books, art, acting, films, technology, education, entrepreneurship, entertainment, and sometimes even past that thing that we call the ego. Our interviews are designed to go behind the scenes and enter the minds of these awesome human beings you know the ones who are out there giving it their all for me for you and for the world well ladies and gentlemen today we have the honor of hosting a true renaissance woman on our show she's a singer tv presenter entrepreneur and now a best-selling author from topping the charts with an icon snoop dogg to inspiring countless individuals with their powerful mantra, it's never too late to live your dreams. Please join me in welcoming the incredible Stacy Jackson. Good morning, good morning. How are you? Great. Uh, well, thank you so much for such a lovely <laughs> introduction. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank you for asking. We are so excited uh, that you're here. It's an absolute pleasure. Uh, so for those who might not be familiar with your journey could you please introduce yourself and share a little bit about your background 
Sure. Um, I'm Stacy Jackson. I um, am a mom of four. <laughs> and um, when I sort of took about 15 or so years off to raise my family, and I always was a singer, but I just never really truly was able to focus on my dream. And when they got a little bit older, I said I wanted to uh, go back into singing, write songs, and record an album. And, uh, wow, it was, uh, I'm going to try to make a long story short, but um, I didn't know where to even get started. I, I joined a band, so that was one, one point of uh, starting position. And then um, I thought it would be kind of cool to see what it would be like to record an album. And I joined a charity called Music for Youth, where I, mu uh, I adjudicated a bunch of, um, I guess, contests all across the UK. Um, and it was really interesting because I got to meet some extraordinarily talented young musicians. And they never actually had the opportunity to uh, record an album either. They all were just professional, uh, sorry, they were performing musicians. And I thought, okay, well, wouldn't it be fun um, and a cool idea if we would pull, you know, some of these incredible musicians together, bring them all down to London from various parts of the UK and record a record? Anyway, um, it was an incredible opportunity and it got a little bit of buzz and because it had buzz, it, um, one song from the record got remixed and suddenly I'm sitting between Lady Gaga and the Scissor Sisters on the charts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm getting calls from producers saying, you know, your vocal really suits this genre of music. Would you be interested in writing more sort of, you know, dance, commercial dance records? And I was like, yes. So that was my entree into, uh, into the music. And at that point, I was um, almost 40 already. And... Uh, so yeah, then it was like, you know, one opportunity came and, and I recorded a record and at that point I'd already technically had a hit record with um, this charity uh, single and uh, I wrote a song about my late father who uh, had, had recently passed at the time and uh, it was a dream that I had where he came to me in the dream, no joke, it was so real, and he said, Stacy, this is your time. This is your chance to do what you've always wanted to do. Because, you know, I, I, I was always singing since I was 11. I was always in bands growing up in Canada, then I moved to New York, and but I put so much, you know, aside to focus on my family that I didn't really think about me anymore. And um, I woke up from the dream, and I wrote the song called Live It Up, um, and I decided I needed a rapper on this, and I thought I would revisit the kids from the charity because they were just extraordinary. And my manager at the time said, you know what, Stacy, you know, you have a hit record already. Um, I think we should go get somebody who, like, you know, has, has a little bit more experience. <laughs> and I said, okay, well, what are you thinking? And he said, well, how about Snoop Dogg? And I said, Stephen, what the heck are you smoking? <laughs> there was no chance. I had, you know, I was pretty much like a PTA mom who like had a hit record. It was a bit of an anomaly. And um, he sent the record out. He said he could get to Snoop because, you know, he had through his sort of contacts and having worked in the industry for a while, he said I can get there. And literally, lo and behold, Five days later, I'm on a plane back to the U.S. I live in the U.K. now. And, uh, yeah, he just loved the story. He loved the song. He uh, was absolutely awesome. And I had this incredible opportunity to work with Snoop in the room, <laughs> like we, we were oh. together. Um, and it was just life-changing. And that was the beginnings of the beginning for me. And yeah, so my first hit record didn't happen until after I turned 40 years old. And that's where it all started. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> <It's not>. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge too. Uh, I have a yeah. question. So um, having children, I won't say that forced you to set aside your dreams, but I know that is a difficult decision to make. Uh, I had to make that choice. I was yeah. on tour yeah. as an artist, and I began right. to have kids, and slowly I found myself transitioning into being a dad. It's like one day yeah. I just woke up, and I was like, what the hey? I'm not an artist anymore. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a father yeah. now, you know, with children, yeah. working a regular job, and 
you know, coming home every day. It's funny. So, I, I totally relate to that 100%. In fact, that is a, that's a big chunk of what Snoop Dogg and I actually were talking about. Because mm. the balance between being, you know, and, and you know, I'm actually on tour now, but my kids are much older at this point. But right. um, I get it. I get being away from them and, you know, having to make choices about, you know, your career and, you know, what's important in their lives. And it really is... A balance, and I'm very lucky, as probably you are as well. I mean, I, I think it does take a little bit of a village when you're raising a family. Like, I'm lucky that my mom was able to come down uh, from Canada and fill some gaps for us. Um, I'm lucky that I have great friends who we could share, you know, and commiserate with. And, you know, you could always drop a kid off <laughs> at a friend's mm-hmm. house. And, like, you know, so it was... You know, being a parent, no matter what your industry is, is always a juggle, and there's always guilt involved. And I can see, you know, how being on the road and you wanting to be more with the children makes perfect sense. You know, I I did it the other way around. I had the kids first, and then I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. going. Um, but you know, I, I it's definitely a struggle with a lot of families, and uh, you know, there are tons of stay-at-home dads now as well, where the mom is out working and the dad is at home and then the, they switch off, you know? They have jobs that afford the opportunity where they can chop and change a little bit and that's great too. So, I don't know, it is always a balance, it's always a struggle, you know, but we try to do it all, eh? And we do, we do. So, with everything beginning to take off for you, um, mm-hmm. the offers and everything coming through, how did you stay grounded? Well, my kids, my family, I mean, they're so, you know, I had had so many opportunities, um, like, oh, even like reality shows, like, you know, the Ladies of London or The Real Housewives, Celebrity Big Brother, all all of them. And I was tempted, you know, because it's an easy, what do you say, it's like the low-hanging fruit, right? You have a brand or you have music or something to sell, let's go on a reality show. And like, all of a sudden, you know, it's you know it turns you into a star and I, I didn't want that's what that's not what I was about I, I think that's my kids I didn't want cameras in my kids faces I didn't want to you know I feel like people who are gonna want to know about me and who like my music are gonna you know follow me anyway I mean it, it's a lot harder to do it that way obviously you have to do a little bit more of a grunt work and but uh, I just didn't want that for my family and I think that's part of it I think you know for me my family came first all the time and I think that's what kept me kind of grounded I still did a lot of the school runs and you know, it was important for me to still give the kids they didn't feel that there was too much missing you know mm-hmm. from from their mom and I think that's probably what kept me, kept me grounded in, in my mind anyways but uh, I ended up writing a book about it <laughs> and even when I wrote the book my kids were like mom this needs to be more fictionalized. <laughs> this can't be about us. I'm like, mm. it's not about you. In the book, she has three kids, not four. <laughs> you know, so my kids were like, they're, they're, they're the ones that have been like, mom, be real. Stay who you are. I'm like, okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's really, they, they pulled me back. They pulled me back to earth. <laughs> it's I, great. I, so speaking of the book, um, it is a best-selling book. Uh, it's called How a Gangster Rapper Made Me a Better Mom. Um, yeah. And at first, I thought this was your story, too. And I was like, okay, okay, no, no, this is, is a fiction. Um, yeah. So what what inspired Loosely you to write this book? Loosely based, uh, I got well, you. Well, just, yeah, exactly. I, basically, what inspired me was the fact that I'd obviously been, like, I, I, I suspect that because I had a lot of interest from some of these reality shows, um, I'm, I, I, I was, became introspective and thought, okay, obviously I have something a bit interesting here. Maybe it's not that common for a 40 plus woman with four kids in tow becoming a pop star, you know? It's, so I, I, I guess there was something of interest there. So with that, um, I ended up um, uh, writing up like my a memoir style book and, uh, you know, obviously based on my journey. And then my kids were like, no way. It's not, <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, don't, don't spill the beans, you know. I mean, because there was a lot, like, that goes on in the journey. Like, what happens on tour and your relationships with your children and the relationships between the kids and each other. And, and so what was interesting was I said, okay, we're going to fictionalize this. And that was, uh, I have to tell you, 
probably the most fun for me because writing a memoir, you know, you have all these anecdotes and you have your life and you have your journey and it is what it is. But then when you have the opportunity, and I love being creative, as, as you would imagine, like to turn these characters into something even bigger and funnier and more humble. And so uh, this is not a spoiler, but in the first page, you'll know that she, that her husband died, like he was killed. And so she's now on this journey as a single mom. So we've given her more challenges. And, and of course, he comes back as a ghost a lot she talks to him he's like her conscious you know and um so it, it was it actually became a really fun project and for someone who's never ever ever written a book before um i really uh i'm so grateful and so humbled that people actually took to it um it's been and i think it still is after five and a half months on the bestseller list in canada so i'm and that's my home country mm. so i've been really uh grateful and uh yeah it's it was fun to make it fictionalized, but that's also, again, another, you know, another, uh, because my kids grounded me, right? <laughs> they made me do it. <laughs> and, and this debut novel is a huge success. Are there any plans for a sequel or more books in the future? Yes. Um, I, this is meant to be a trilogy, actually. Um, so the characters growth is uh, another sort of creative aspect that I love so much. So in the next book, I've just written the 12 chapter synopsis for the next book. Um, but, you know, even my management are like, Stacy, slow down, slow down. <laughs> I just finished narrating the audio book for this book, How a Gangster Rapper Made Me a Better Mom. Lovely. And the audio book incorporates an entire soundtrack where all the characters in the book actually have their own genres of music. And they, so it's almost like a musical uh, in, 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 as a book. So that is super fun to be doing. I'm in post-production right now where we're integrating the music into the narration. So it's really fun. So I, I have to do first things first and focus on that. And I have a record coming out called Superwoman uh, at the end of the summer. My new single comes out also next week. So I'm like, I've got so many things on the, uh, like I'm juggling so many plates that the next book won't come out for a while. But I definitely have one. Uh, already in the works in terms of the structure and the, the character uh, ends up, you know, growing and she creates a line of fitness clothes, again, loosely based on my own journey. And then in the third book, you know, she's getting older and older and her kids are getting older and she's now on television and she's uh, having to deal with hormone replacements because she's going through menopause. So her, this character sort of changes throughout uh, her her journey of life really and uh, and she's she's continuing to try to juggle it all you know the family her career and how how her career changes and grows and uh, so it's been you know it's it's like parallel to my life but like I said because it's fictionalized a lot of the characters are sort of larger than life and of course a song involved so yeah it's, it's a great project but uh, I've got so many other things spinning right now. I have to like keep focused on one thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, and yes, yeah, Superwoman sounds like a fitting title for the next record, um, especially with the <laughs> <laughs> expansion of uh, this novel into three more books. I mean, two more books, uh, oh, and then yeah. your sports top brand, Stay Fit. Yeah, it sounds very like your real life here. <laughs> yeah, it is very much. I mean, you know, but people pull up on experiences that I guess even when I write songs, I mean, my records are largely based on living your dream, living your yeah. best life, doing what you love to do, and being happy. In fact, we're doing the music video for Superwoman, and I nice. called upon, I called upon a lot of my um, amazing girlfriends. I have a like, and I have. Some wonderful people who have surrounded me, and I, I'm drawn to a community of strong women. Like I feel, the message that I want to project is that like you can do it. You can do it. You know, there is a way. If you want to be happy, it's not impossible to live your dream. And so I have some incredibly talented family and friends, and I said, do me a favor, send me some of your best clips of you doing what you love to do. I have a woman who is one of my closest friends. I've known her for, since kindergarten. And she is still barefoot water skiing, okay? And I'm like, wow. please send me a clip of that. So I've got, like, some amazing, uh, you know, business women and friends and um, 
people in the fashion industry, fashion industry, people in the music industry, um, friends, like all different industries and walks of life. And I'm like, send me, send me, send me stuff. And so we're going to put together like a montage of all the people in my life who I feel are their own super women, you know, and I think it becomes more personal that way. And, uh, and, and yeah, and they're, they're all so excited to be a part of the video as well. So it's, it's nice. I'm actually right. calling upon my real life, you know, friends and family to participate. So it's great. That is awesome. And what's even more cooler is that you're like smashing this thing called ageism out of the park. Like there is no <laughs> limit so. to what you're doing. Yeah. And it's inspiring oh, to me. I am so so humbled oh thank yeah, you absolutely thank you i actually just, just i last night was the most fun i went to see stevie nicks okay now this Ooh. woman is as old as my mom yeah performing in hyde park last night in london and she brought the frigging house down she was unbelievable I, I mean, this is a woman that, no joke, uh, I mean, uh, the energy that, and of course, her whole band also is like up at that age. You know, they're not, uh, you know, they're not spring chicken. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, uh, they're pretty, you know, uh, up there in age. And they all were rocking it. And then at the end, when she came out with an encore, she, this is great. Uh, nobody would have guessed. She brought out Harry Styles. Talk about a oh. juxtaposition. And yeah, the, the concert was exceptional. And she still has this extraordinary voice, very distinctive voice. And I just turned to my friend, uh, who, by the way, is the barefoot water skier. And I said to her, I am going to be doing this. I, yes. I want to still be doing this at that age. If people will still come out and see me, and I remember I do dance music, so hopefully I still have the energy to do this. But I just, it was so inspiring that, you know, why give up your dream if you still have it in you? Like, you know, nobody's yeah. telling you that you ever need to stop if you're passionate about something so much, you know? Exactly. Exactly. All right, Stacy, where can our listeners connect with you on the Internet? Um, I am at stacyjackson.com. I'm all over Spotify and Amazon if you want to listen to my music, if you want to buy my book, Amazon as well, or uh, here in the UK, it's Waterstones and Foils in the States, I'm not sure where, but Amazon definitely. Um, and uh, all my social media handle is st handles are Stayrox, S-T-A-E-R-O-X on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that. Yeah. X, right. not Twitter. <laughs> X, yeah. So X. listen. I'm not used to that. Yeah. Um, just in case you didn't get those links, I will have them in the description of this episode and in the show notes. So all you guys have to do is just click the links, get ready to rock, get ready to read some awesome material. This is great stuff. Mm -hmm. So we've had an absolute pleasure having Stacy on the show. Her journey is truly inspiring, and we can't wait to see what she do next. To our listeners, make sure to check out Stacy's new album that is coming out soon, Superwoman, and her best-selling book, How a Gangster Rapper Made Me a Better Mom. Can't wait to see this hit the, uh, the big screen, too, like a TV, TV series. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. <laughs> That'd be cool. Would you play? Uh, would you play yourself? Oh, probably not. I'd love <laughs> to see somebody like a Reese Witherspoon or you know, oh, yeah. one of yeah, or Kate Hudson or someone like that play that role. I that would be the ultimate dream. Like you know, to have someone like that to do. But I mean, you know, like I said, it's it's never too late to live your dreams. I'm you never say no, right? Never say never. Never say no. So yeah, yeah exactly. See what happens. Uh, I you know this is. I'm really crossing my fingers and toes that it does end up like that. But, you know, first, first things first, it's uh, focus, focus on what you've got going at the moment. Because if you take your eye off the ball, then, you know, it falls down. <laughs> so it. we want to make sure that we're juggling and it stays up in the air. True, true. All right. Thank you so much, Stacey Jackson. It was a complete honor. Oh, thank you so much. It's lovely to be on the show. Thank you. Have a great day. Nice to meet you. you Thank too. you. You too. Bye. Bye. Thank you 
my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio Live. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab it from either Spreaker.com forward slash only one media group, Spotify, CastBox, iHeart Radio, iTunes, YouTube, the app Podcast Addict, or over at our website which again is onlyonemediagroup.com and that goes for every single show that we've ever aired if you like to request music or send something for me to play email it to vradio at onlyonemediagroup.com that is v as in victor and here's my disclaimer we are genre free we do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay but facts alone and actually scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right that's the bottom line this is my show so deal with it (laughs) just kidding on behalf of myself denny i appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us spread the word because sharing is caring we stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show be sure to connect with me on facebook Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat, TikTok, at all social media sites, as well as Spreaker, YouTube, we always follow back. Okay, well, just remember to put yourself into everything that you do and never stop investing in yourself. Peace, love, grilled cheese, and talk with you later. You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer The Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a 7th Sign Regime Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate Exclusive.